everyone has ups and downs. But imagine your normal ups and downs stretched into a roller coaster of extreme highs and crushing lows that derails your life plans, empties your bank accounts, and blows up your relationships. Welcome back to Savvy Psychologist. I'm your host, Dr. Jade Wu. Every week, I'll help you meet life challenges with evidence-based research, a sympathetic ear, and zero judgment. Today, we look at bipolar disorder and its hallmark symptom, mania. Mania is often misunderstood, so let's bust some myths and learn what it really is about. Bipolar is a term that gets thrown around a lot, often in demeaning ways as shorthand for indecisive or inconsistent, such as, she's so bipolar, one day she wants to marry him, another day she wants to break up. But indecision and bipolar disorder are not one and the same. True bipolar disorder, which used to be called manic depression, is a very serious psychological disorder that could completely upend a person's life, changing the trajectory of their relationships, physical health, career, and self-image, if not treated. And it's not so easily overcome, not simply through dancing and love, like for Bradley Cooper's character in the movie Silver Linings Playbook. So let's bust some myths and paint bipolar disorder in a truer light, so we can better understand and support the people in our lives who may be struggling with it. After all, about 5% of the population has some form of bipolar disorder, so chances are the someone in your life could benefit from you having more knowledge on this topic. So what sets bipolar disorder apart? The hallmark symptom and the thing that sets it apart from plain old depression is mania. This describes a days-long altered state of being that sends a person careening out of control. So here are five signs that someone is in the middle of a manic episode. Sign number one, euphoria. So we've all felt giddy at one time or another. Maybe we got an unexpected bonus at work or we got asked on a date by our crush. There's an extra spring in your step and you feel like you're ready to smile at anything. Now amplify that feeling through a stadium concert sound system. You feel out of this world high on life. You're literally shouting from the rooftops because being on the ground is simply not enough to express how much you're just exploding with euphoria. Sign number two, grandiosity. Nothing is impossible for you. No one is better qualified to start this new company. You're a genius that nobody is smart enough to understand, and you're convinced that your 3 a.m. scribblings will go down in history as being on the level of Shakespeare. You have the confidence of Kanye on steroids. Mania sign number three, impulsive decisions and bad judgment. You find yourself doing risky, impulsive things like buying a Land Rover on a whim when you live in Manhattan, or sinking all of your savings into Dogecoin, or jumping from balcony to balcony in your apartment complex like Spider-Man, or proposing marriage to someone you just met on a long flight before the plane has even landed. Mania sign number four, feeling little to no need for sleep. You stay up all night to work on a project or roam around town, and you feel no need for rest. Even after staying up for a few days straight with very little sleep, you're running on fumes but still feeling really jazzed and just ready to go. Mania sign number five, racing thoughts and nonstop talking. You are the life of the party, even when it's just a party of two. You can't stop talking, jumping from subject to loosely associated subject. You're excited about everything and anything can make you shout with laughter. So if someone has a few of these signs of euphoria, grandiosity, impulsivity, feeling no need for sleep, or racing thoughts and nonstop talking, then they could be experiencing mania. But it's important to note that mania comes in different forms. About 1% of the population has bipolar disorder type 1, and 4% have bipolar disorder type 2. The main difference is that in bipolar disorder type 2, the highs are less intense. Instead of having full-blown manic episodes, people with this type of bipolar disorder have hypomanic episodes, which are less destructive. In fact, many people who have hypomanic episodes don't even think of them as a problem. 
Some may even look forward to their, quote, energetic periods, when they feel most creative, inspired, optimistic, and their friends love them because they're gregarious, funny, and more generous than usual at the cocktail bar. On the other hand, a full-blown manic episode has a direct negative impact on a person's functioning. Impulsivity and other symptoms can become such a problem that it lands a person in the hospital. This is actually one of the options for fulfilling a diagnostic criterion for manic episode, either hospitalization due to the aforementioned symptoms, or they have lasted at least seven days. And also, mania isn't necessarily happy. It can be irritable and explosive as well. Extreme irritability may turn into aggression, but it's important to remember this doesn't necessarily mean danger to others. In fact, a 2001 study in The Lancet found that people with mental illness are far more likely to be the victims of homicide or fatal accidents than the perpetrators. Now let's talk about the other side of the coin. So on the opposite end of the spectrum from mania is depression, which also involves days-long or weeks-long bouts of severe mood change. This one is probably more familiar that crushing feeling of hopelessness and emptiness, the sense that things will never get better, the feeling of physically slogging through mud even for the most basic activities like brushing your teeth. It's as if a heavy, wet blanket has been draped over you, obscuring the light and anything else bright or hopeful. People with bipolar disorder not only have to come down from the euphoria of mania, but also have to climb out of the depths of depression, both of which are just monumental efforts. But contrary to popular belief, it's not that they cycle between mania and depression from moment to moment, hour to hour, or even from day to day. In a rarer mood disorder called cyclothymia, there might be frequent back and forths between mania and depression, but this is not the case in bipolar disorder. In bipolar disorder, there are long periods of normalcy where the person feels like their own self and is able to enjoy life's pleasures and maintain healthy relationships and build a fulfilling career. But these euthymic periods are punctuated by the explosive days-long episodes of mania that can empty bank accounts or end relationships and deep episodes of depression that grind everything to a halt. And you might be thinking that Because these symptoms are so big and so explosive, bipolar disorder must be very easy to diagnose and recognize, right? Well, not so much the case. More than 50% of cases of bipolar disorder make themselves known by age 25, often in the late teens or early adult years. But bipolar disorder sometimes escapes diagnosis for years and is only discovered later in life. Now let's consider a hypothetical woman named Angela. Angela is 42 and has a son. She's been married four times, twice to her son's father. She's been super social for the past week, chatting with everyone she sees, whether she knows them or not, and says she feels great with a capital G. After cleaning her whole house top to bottom last week, she took her son to soccer practice, and instead of watching from the sidelines, she joined in on the kids' game. She then tried to kiss the coach. Over the last few days, however, she's been in bed most of the day. She has no energy and feels like a zombie. She does manage to get up when her son comes home from school, but making dinner, if it even happens, is exhausting. The depressive side of bipolar disorder where we leave Angela looks just like regular depression, which is also called unipolar depression. Bipolar disorder often gets misdiagnosed as unipolar depression because this is when people seek help. And in that moment of dark depression, it may feel like this is the only state they've ever experienced. But in people with true bipolar disorder, medications for unipolar depression, ironically, can trigger a manic episode. So we do have to be very careful about differentiating the two. And unfortunately, Bipolar disorder gets misdiagnosed more often than not. In fact, a 2008 study out of Brown University found that 57% of adults diagnosed with bipolar disorder 
turned out not to have the condition. So if you or a loved one has been diagnosed, consider seeking a second opinion just in case. And if bipolar disorder is your true diagnosis, have hope. Even though it isn't curable, it is very treatable. And I have personally witnessed students and mothers and artists reclaiming their lives and going on to thrive. And with celebrities from Demi Lovato to Catherine Zeta-Jones coming forward with their own diagnoses, stigma for bipolar disorder is crumbling too. And on that hopeful note, Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Let's continue the conversation on social media. You can find me on Facebook and Twitter. I'm at QDT Savvy Psych and also at Jade Wu PhD. We can also keep in touch through the Savvy Psychologist newsletter. Now, Savvy Psychologist is audio engineered by Steve Rickyberg and edited by Beata Santora. As always, Savvy Psychologist is strictly for informational purposes and does not substitute for mental health care from a licensed professional. Thank you again for joining me, and I'll see you next week for a happier, healthier mind.